Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, I come to the floor today as a doctor who's practiced medicine in Wyoming for about 25 years. And during that time, I was medical director of something called the Wyoming Health Fairs, where we provide low-cost blood screening for people for early detection and early treatment of problems and medical problems. Because we know one of the things that uh, was attempted to be uh, solved with the, uh, the debate and the discussion on health care was to have people involved in their own health care decisions and early detection as well as prevention of, of disease. So I was at a health fair last weekend in, uh, in Warland, Wyoming, in Washakie County. Had a chance to visit with a number of folks there who were attending the fair, uh, also people with small businesses. And so the first thing I'd like to do is congratulate this body and specifically congratulate uh, Senator Johans from Nebraska for the repeal of the uh, 1099 form uh, regulations, which significant burden to small businesses all around, uh, all around the country. Uh, I also come to the floor uh, as someone who has practiced medicine and has been watching very closely with this health care law. And uh, it's one that I believe is uh, bad for patients, uh, bad for providers, the nurses and the doctors who take care of those patients, and, and bad for the American taxpayers because I think this is going to add significantly to our growing debt problem. And these are things that need to be addressed. But one of the parts of the health care law, the 2,700-page law that was passed, uh, is dealt with something called accountable care organizations. And uh, those are intended to help people coordinate care and have that coordinated care increase people's uh, health and uh, early detection of problems and uh, help minimize problems, but also attempted to help save money. Well, the, the six pages of the health care law that had to deal with accountable care organizations uh, has resulted in a release of regulations uh, on the 31st of March of 429 pages of regulations, which will have a significant impact on restructuring the way that medicine is practiced in the United States. One of, the, uh, one of the concerns is that, uh, that I look at this in terms of our growing debt is that the administration is bragging that the regulations save Medicare money, about $960 million total, best case scenario, over a three-year period of time. So savings of less than $1 billion, a restructuring of the way medicine is being practiced, a savings of less than $1 billion at a time where Medicare will be spending over those three years over $1.5 trillion. So savings of less than a billion at an expenditure of over $1.5 trillion. The other thing that was so, so interesting watching this administration is they've come out with a statement about regulations. Small business people that I've talked to in Warland last weekend at the health fair uh, will tell you that increased government regulations add to the cost of doing business, make it harder for them to hire more people, uh, and it's specifically related to the increased costs. So then it was interesting to see the administration saying that an increase in labor demand due to regulations may, be a, may have a stimulative effect that results in a net increase in overall employment. The administration apparently believes that if you increase the, the, the rules and regulations on businesses, it's going to make it better for them when they will tell you universally it will make it worse. Additionally, Madam President, I come to the floor because last Friday night, the Department of Health and Human Services released their new next round of Obamacare waivers. You know, we've talked about those in the past uh, on this floor as part of a doctor's second opinion that if this health care law is so good, why do millions and millions of Americans say, we can't live under this? And the administration agrees and grants them waivers. So this past weekend, uh, Secretary Sebelius added another 128 waivers covering another 300,000 Americans to say no. For the next year, you get a one-year waiver. You don't have to live under the mandates of Obamacare. So now we're at a point where the total number of waivers granted has been over 1,000, covering 2,930,000 people. So, wow, what's the breakdown of those people? Who are they? How can they get those waivers? Well, it's interesting in this country where union workers are just a small percentage of the total workforce, 49 percent, almost half of all of the waivers, have been granted to people who get their insurance through the unions. 
Now, I just looked at this list that, that came out, and, it, and it's interesting because uh, one of the waivers that has been granted for 13,000 employees, enrollees, is the, uh, the United Food and Commercial Workers Unions. So let's see what we can find out about them. If we go to their website and go to the answer, the area that deals with health care, what it says is, thanks to your hard work, this is to the, to the people in the union, thanks to your hard work over the past year, Congress passed a health care reform bill that was signed into law by President Obama. They say this landmark reform is a hard-fought victory for the United Food um, and, uh, and Commercial Workers Union. Well, wait a second. Madam President, these are the same people that went in and asked for and got from the Secretary of Health and Human Services a waiver. A waiver so they don't have to live under it. Now, it's interesting, if you go to this website, you can click to other things, and what you can find is that you can actually watch a video on the website of the people that just got a waiver, a video of the members of this union, quote, rally and talk about health care reform. Oh, the health care reform, they're rallying for it, but they don't want it to apply to them. Secretary of Health and Human Services says, that's fine, you can have a waiver. Oh, Madam President, you can actually see pictures of union members taking action on health care reform, but it's not the action of applying for the waiver, a waiver they've just been granted by the Secretary of Health and Human Service. Now it says, call your members of Congress to thank them for passing real reform. Oh, you're supposed to thank the members of this body for passing something, but then they've applied for a waiver that's been granted for over 13,000 members who get insurance through this program. And then they ask you, you can also check an area to read the background information on this union's advocacy of health care reform. Advocacy for a program that they wanted to force down the throats of the American people, but yet, Madam President, don't want to live under themselves. Madam President, this health care law is bad for this country. It is bad for our patients. It is bad for our health care providers. And it's bad for taxpayers. And the union members who, who absolutely lobbied for it are now saying, now that they've read the bill, now that they know what's in the law, they're saying they don't want it to apply to them. So much so that one of the unions that have gotten a, a waiver on their recent website, it said, we are challenged by how to implement the law under prevailing circumstances. Well, the prevailing circumstances are the law that they wanted passed. It says the trustees of the fund have no ability to secure additional contributions needed to cover the increased costs of providing these required, Madam President, required by the people on the other side of the aisle that voted for this, required additional benefits. It says the trustees are requ requesting a waiver from HHS to preserve the be annual benefit limitation now in place for the part-time plan of benefits to minimize the cost impact of transitioning to the requirements of the Reform Act. Well, what it basically says is that these folks who want the waiver are saying what I've been saying on this floor since the beginning of the debate, that this is going to be bad for taxpayers and, the people, and it's going to drive up the cost of care, it's going to drive up the cost of insurance, in spite of the President's promise that if we pass this, families would see premiums drop by $2,100. In spite of the President's pre promise that if you like your plan, you can keep it. What we're seeing for the people who proudly lobbied for this is they don't want it to apply to them. They realize now that it is going to cause their plans to have significant problems. And, and Madam President, I believe that every American ought to be able to have a waiver. Every American ought to not have to live under these health care laws. It, to me, it, it's unaffordable. Uh, it's unmanageable, uh, and, and I believe it is unconstitutional. And that's why I come to the floor, as I have every week with a doctor's second opinion, that we must repeal and replace this health care law. Thank you, Madam President. I yield the floor.